How many is going to go home and cultivate this after tonight? There's nothing better than to get a hold of something that somebody else does all the heavy lifting. And you go home and it's much, much more user friendly for you to do. God knows that. And he just expects you and I to really come in and, you know, he'll knock the giant down, but we got to cut his head off. And Come on, say, he does his part, and I do my part. I fill the putts with water, and he turns it to wine. I can't do the wine part, and he will not do the water part. I do the water, and he does the wine. Come on, give him a shout. It's true. It's true. It's so true. And tonight, let's believe that in this meeting that God's going to meet you in a very special way. A very special way. But you have to be willing to go check. There's bathrooms all over this huge place. There's hallways to go test and see if, how good your stability is, how good you can walk or see. If you're expecting to see, if you're expecting to... I mean, it, it, it's really important that someone like the pastors of this church... I was thinking about this afternoon, George and Terry. None of this stuff would happen today if you didn't have leaders here that were strong enough, it takes a strong leader to let all this happen. I mean, because there's wildfire, and there's strange fire, and then there's Holy Ghost fire. And sometimes you think it's God's you know, Holy Ghost fire, and it turns into strange fire. But this morning, to you, thank you for letting this altar be what it is to the people today. Thank you. Give them a big God bless you, I tell you. I'm in some churches, and I mean, I just look at one look at the pastor, and he's going like this at his watch. You're like, you know, like, okay, you're about done. And, and George this morning was saying, go for it, go for it. Straighten all these people out. Hurry up, straighten them all out. It don't take God long whenever you're serious. You come in expecting, and like a skillet, if the skillet's hot, the egg fries quickly. If you come in with any kind of prep, that's what cultivating is, it's preparing the soil. It's an agricultural term that means preparing the soil. You know, and so the more prepared you can be, not for Christmas, we know how to do that. Not for fishing, we know how to do that. And shopping, we know how to prepare for that. We can prepare for Thanksgiving and weddings, and we can prepare for funerals. We know how to do all that. But how do you prepare for a miracle? If you're blind, how do you prepare to see? If you're stage four cancer, how do you prepare for it to go that night? What's different about that? What's, it's vastly different because you're moving out of the natural realm. A Adam had no, or excuse me, uh, Abraham had no sperm and Sarah had no eggs. Where'd the baby come from? Now, the answer, generally speaking, is, well, God. Ah, somewhere more than that. Come on, say, he had no sperm. Yes. Come on, that means his body was now dead. I would think that's what it means at 100 years old. Can you say amen? Don't look at me like you're shocked about that term. <laughs> Pastor George said I could say that, so leave, leave me alone. Don't, don't pick on me tonight. I, I'm, not, I'm really in a miracle mood, so don't pick on me tonight. Oh, come, on. come on, say, he had no sperm. Yeah. And her womb, her womb was dead. So she had no eggs. Had no eggs. So, so where did that baby come from? When Jesus multiplied the food, where did the food come from? Everything comes from somewhere. So where did the baby come from? Where did the food come from? And we could go in a litany of other stories. There is another dimension. Oh, somebody better get excited here. Come on. Come on, so there is, there is. another dimension, dimension where there is, where there is. Everything, everything we need, we need. In, an in an abundant supply. Every body part you need. Oh. If you've ever gone crabbing in Miami, off of Miami Beach, you know, if you ever go crabbing, you, you learn, and I, this was a shock to me, but... They'll dive in, they'll get their crab, then of course they bring them back to the, and then they rip one leg off. And they throw the crab back into the ocean with one leg. 
And I said to the guy, I said, what do you do that for? He said, because they'll grow another leg. I said, well, wait a minute. Say slow motion that. Say that slow motion. He said, that's crabby. You catch a crab, you rip the leg off, you throw it back in the ocean. And they grow another leg. I tell you what, I, I just couldn't eat anything the rest of the night. <laughs> no, but my mind went, said, if God will do that for a crab. If the animals are lower than us, come on, say, we're his highest creation. We're made in his image and his likeness. Come on, say, we're wired to be like him. So then why don't we see more creative miracles? Because we don't challenge it. There's some things in our mind that our faith hasn't advanced yet to. And that's why you can always grow in your faith to believe for more. I just got a thing from Dave Williams. He pastors a great church in Michigan, Lansing, Michigan. We had a guy come up that had his thumb completely clear back to the hand cut off. Came to a meeting. I don't know. We were there a few months ago. He just sent me an Instagram picture. He said, the thumb has grown completely back. <laughs> now... That may not mean much to you tonight. You're, you got both thumbs. You're okay with that. But if you just think about the significance of some of the miracles that you're witnessing. And what's God is saying? What's God saying? It's my time to display on planet Earth the grand finale. How many believe in the grand finale? Come on, say, take the limits off. Say it. You know, and, and you may not have the faith in you at the moment for that, but at least said that this, raise the bar. Begin to think it, imagine, begin to speak it. If he said all things are possible, he didn't say some things. I said, if he said, if he said all things, did he say all things? Someone say, all things is my thing. And that means no matter what it is. But that, so when you get into that other dimension, how did Abraham get the baby to this dimension? You know, did him and Sarah just have a, a great night in the tent? I mean, how did that happen? How did that happen? Who calleth those things. You know it. He just called it in. It can't be that simple. Yeah, we miss it. We miss, we miss the simple things. We like to complicate things. Simple. It's so simple that if, if, you, if, you, were, if you left here tonight and said, I'm going to start doing that tomorrow, you'd run right into your flesh. You would run right into, what are you doing? See, it's until something becomes habit. Da Daniel didn't learn how to pray in the den. Some of us, we, thir we learn to pray when the lions are around. Who shut up? Who shut up? Who shut up? <laughs> Our prayer life begins when the lions show up. Come on, say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. He took three times a day into the den. He took a prayer habit into the den. Paul and Silas took a praise habit into the prison. Somebody better help me tonight. Nothing replaces what you cultivate daily. Show me your daily habits, I'll show you your future. You know, there's, there's more to have than what you're receiving for free. I mean, this place amazes me. Do you, are you amazed at the place they called Eagle Mountain Church? Pastors George and Terry and their whole team that's here. There's this other great leader, he hangs out here. His team is Kenneth Copeland. What, what an army of people here. Amen. You know, I'm so grateful, grateful to you guys for being friends and trusting me. And pass that on to Kenneth if he's not watching tonight. It's, it's a big privilege to be trusted. That's what the Bible's all about. Can he trust you with more? You haven't testified with what you do have. So can he trust you with more? One lady said, when I get my first 10 million, I'm going to give you a million dollars. I said, no, you won't. No, you won't. You haven't given me a dollar out of 10. How are you going to give me a million out of 10? 
trustworthy. Love you give, trust you earn. I can love you without trusting you. You cannot. Yeah, it's true. I can love you with the love of God, but I don't trust you. Trust you earn. You don't just trust everybody with your children. I can't hear you. You don't trust everybody with that favorite sports car you have. Come on, somebody. You just don't. There's a lot of people you don't trust. You love them, but you don't trust them. Why? Because trust is earned. And when God sees you handle the favor you have, when you can handle it, not get all caught up in it, when you can handle that testimony and you're telling people the truth about it and there's no embellishing it, it just is what it is and you were where you were and when he sees you can trust you with that, then when he sees he can trust you with the money that you have, no, he sees you, he's, you're trustworthy, you're, you give, you give back, you give to this and that and you support the church, the kingdom. Drug people support drugs. Pornography supports the porn pornographic industry. None of those industries would exist unless somebody didn't subsidize them. Somebody's paying for evil to stay alive. But there's a day coming. Come on, say there's a day. Come on, say there's a day when the evil empire will come the whole way crumbling down. Come on. Come on, give God a big shout today for that. But every time... Every time you get a healing, I mean, from your hand to your head to cancer to your ear, every time you get a healing, I mean, you slam that dark kingdom. You send this signal down through the hallways of hell that, hey, he's still doing this. He did it in me. And dear God, as soon as I get enough faith, I'm going to help other people get it. That's the end time revival is getting ready to break out of God's people. I mean, how can you contain everything that you're seeing? It's hard to contain when you see God do stuff. What else is there interesting to talk about, really? Come on, say amen. amen. I mean, it's all, I mean, if you talk about accomplishments and degrees and college graduates, that's, that's wonderful. It's all part of the family. Yeah, 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 a million times, yes. And you got a touchdown, you got a trophy, great, but those things disappear. When you talk about what, what you've seen the Lord do, even if you wasn't part of it, but you were just an eyewitness to it. I walk out of so many meetings, just about every one of them now, and I just, I look up and I say, how'd, how'd you do that? I mean, I know how he did it. I know that he's God, but I just want to be impressed with him. I don't want to never not be impressed. I don't want to get blasé, casé, you know, uh, you know, common. Yeah, that's God. That's what Jesus does. I don't want, don't get me away from that spirit. I want to be amazed. If you don't think walking on water is hard, go home tonight and try it. <laughs> Fill your bathtub up and jump in. Come on, somebody help me. It's amazing, these stories that we read. This one lady came and she had money problems. She needed to get some money. I didn't, I said, ma'am, I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking. I mean, she said, get, I need a word. Tell me how, to, how I can get money. So I just said, Lord, what's she to do? And he said, tell her to go fill her bathtub up and throw, cast bread on it. That's, the, that's Ecclesiastes chapter 11. It's as close to the scriptures you could get. She said, ooh. She said, it'll clog the drain, Billy. It'll clog the drain. I said, ma'am, you'll get the money, cast the bread, but it'll clog the drain. Give me something that won't clog the drain. Don't bring God down to your level. Quit bringing God down to your level. He wants to elevate you. Come on, say, he wants to stretch you. Come on, say, my God lives in the stretch. I mean, he made, Joshua put his hand up and made the sun stand still. So if you think that's easy, go try that. If you tell your friend that, he'll say, ah, that's stretching it. That's stretching it. Noah made a boat out of gopher wood. Gopher wood and mud. The Titanic sunk when it hit an ice cube. Come on, somebody. And, and, and Noah made a boat that kept him and his eight people alive with the polar axis shift and the whole earth went on us out of rotation. Boy, that's a stretch. 
If you read your Bible enough, you'll find out that's a stretch, that's a stretch. That's a stretch. That's really a stretch. He just didn't turn water into wine. There were no grapes. Try that one on for size. Come on. This book is meant to just continually cause our natural mind to explode. And remember, it's not the shout that brought the walls down. It's everything they did before that. It was the marching. It was keeping their mouth shut for seven days. It was all of that prep, all that cultivating. And then the shout gets all the credit. But it was the cultivating that set the shout up to get the job done. Cultivating seems endless and boring and like nothing's really happening. You read your Bible and you meditate. Thank you, Lord. You close the Bible and you put it away. But you're cultivating something on the inside of you that's setting the stage for some of the biggest surprises of your life. And they're, they're just, not, these meetings don't replace that. Don't let any meeting or any preacher replace that. That's word becoming flesh in you. And that's what this church thrives on. That's what it's built on. Hearing the word, speaking the word, acting on the word. I mean, it doesn't help lazy Christians one bit. Come on, say amen. amen. But then they don't get to feel that reward of being invested in the system, in the kingdom. The more you invest yourself into this, the more you're going to feel a part of it. And that's the hardest miracle for the devil to steal is the one you get vertical with. He told Mary when Mary was sitting at his feet, he said, Martha's out there doing all that, but you're sitting here. And here's what he told Mary. Mary, he said, this part can never be taken from you. Oh, my gosh. You'll never be able to have this stolen. This part right here. Come on, put your hands up and say, what I get directly. From him to me. Off of his back to my body. Come on, off of his stripes. Onto my disease. Onto my pain. What I get from him to me will never be taken away. Come on, somebody better give him a shout here tonight. Come on. You, you, you can't lose if you cultivate. You can't lose. Because you'll end up in a presence outside of your own. It's the only way they could create a different climate in the same jail cell. They weren't in prison. They were in the inner prison. They were underground. No ventilation, no windows. And no music. You know, and no Instagram and no Facebook and none of that. Bleeding, hanging on a wall. And they decided the only way we can escape this negative atmosphere is to create our own. Jesus didn't have a praise team. He didn't have David Ellis. <laughs> he didn't have a choir. So how did Jesus, where did he get the atmosphere? With his words. With, the, with, his, with his commitment to speaking to Father. Come on, say, with my mouth. With my mouth. I, can I can create an atmosphere. Right in the negative atmosphere. Bigger than the balloons in the hospital. Come on, bigger than the cork board with cards on it. I mean, the devil walks right past all those balloons, right past all the cards on the cork board, and just causes people to, to be in fear. That if you release your words in the hospital room, come on, somebody help me. If you'll release the song of the Lord, if you'll throw some of those scriptures out into the atmosphere. Oh, my, you talk about a balloon coming from Russia that we're afraid of. Boy, when the devil sees your words floating through the atmosphere. Come on, say, I can change any atmosphere. By speaking what's already written. Hey, Brother Billy, I don't know what to say. Speak what's already written. What God say in Isaiah 43, 26? Remind me. Bring me into remembrance of Calvary. Think about that. God telling us to remind us, telling me to remind him about Calvary. Well, I'm thinking, Lord, why would you need to be reminded? But he knows if I remind him, then I have to have it in me to remind him. Put me in remembrance of what I did for you. Put me in remembrance about the promise I made you, the prophecy that I gave you, if you remember it. 
Every one of you should have a folder. If you're going to be, if you're going to continue to believe in prophetic words, I would say get a folder and every word you get, get the CD or the D, whatever you get that's recorded yeah. and, and get some, a file and collect that. It's a prophetic, it's a, it, it's a roadmap to where you're headed. But this thing about getting it and forgetting it and getting it and forgetting it and not remembering it, how can you build on anything? God's into building the kingdom in you. Yes, amen. Come on, say, he's into building the kingdom. He's in the building the kingdom. On the inside of me. On the inside of me. He, he's in this to get you so excited, you can't keep quiet. Amen. You accidentally testify. You just can't help it. There's just, you, you, go, you, don't want to, you don't want to disturb anybody. You don't want to break the rules of the, of the office. You know, you don't want to do any of that. You don't want to, you know, but you, you just can't help it. You had an encounter. You had a visitation. And a white man came, he fell under the power. This was in Tampa, fell under the power. He had prostate cancer stage four. I heard about he came from a long way to get the prayer. So he goes under the power. So I, I thought, I've got to watch. I don't want to walk or just walk around him. So maybe half an hour after he was on the floor, I just wanted to walk around him while he talked to me. I don't know how people talk when they're under the power. It's amazing how they do that. He said, Billy, Billy. I said, yeah. He's supposed to be under the power, by the way, right now. He said, I've got to go to the bathroom. I've got to go to the bathroom. I said, okay, all right. And I said, let's, uh, I said, oh, she was coming over here. And she's got to go to the bathroom. Can you help him up and get him to the bathroom? So they helped him up and took him to the bathroom. He came running into the, we were in a ballroom in a hotel. He came running in. Here, he went to the urinal. He began to urinate, coal black yarn with dead cancer cells. Started coming out of his body. You know, he testified to that and he was healed of prostate cancer. And I, I just, you know, I, I marveled at that story. And I said, what do you think of that? He said, well, I'll tell you what, I, I just got tired of having it. And I just told the devil, I'm going down there and pick up my healing. <laughs> One of the ones, Pastor, was so excited. I was at Bob Nichols' church years ago at Calvary Cathedral, years ago. They brought a lady in that was nearly blind. Coke bottles, glasses, her cataracts were so bad. And so I went down off the steps. I said, so ma'am, how bad are those eyes? And there's cameras, two cameras were rolling right on each side of me. And I said, so are your eyes really bad? I want to know how bad your eyes are because I want to know how big the, the testimony is. She says, well, I, I can't hardly see you. She says, I think you got white hair. Is that white hair you got there? And I said, you can't see any details. She says, I'm sorry, I can't. I said, well, do you mind if I get up underneath your glasses? I'm going to put my thumbs on your eyes. She says, you go right ahead and put those thumbs on my eyes. <laughs> Some people would get mad if you touch their eyes with thumbs. I'll tell you that right now. But. So I put my thumbs up underneath her glasses, and I said, and prayed the prayer, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, and, you know, release the anointing. And I took my, thumb, uh, my thumbs away, and I said, so what do you, what, how is it, ma'am? And here's exactly what she did. She said, I can, just like in this mannerisms, she said, I see you perfectly. Well, I, I, I thought this bothers me because if you were that blind and you can see that well, you should get a little more excited than that. <laughs> sometimes I leave it slide because you don't want to draw attention to some of that stuff. But sometimes you say, you know, I just come on, man. If you're that, I mean, what's going on here? I said, ma'am, I said, if you really were that blind and you really, she said, I see you perfectly. I said, okay, then time out. Time out here. If you can see me that way, and you, yeah, yeah, and, and you were that, yeah, yeah, then shouldn't you get more excited? She said, oh, all that carrying on I did at home. I just came here to pick it up. <laughs> Come on, somebody help me here. She said, I did all that shouting and claiming and taking and binding and loosening and get out of my face. I did all that at home. But this is not my church and I don't want to do that in a strange church. So I thought I'd just come down here and pick up my healing. She said, and I got it and thank you very much. And I felt about that big. I was judging her excitement level. But we really need to question that. What makes the carbonation, the bubbles in our drink, what makes that happen in us? 
Number one, you're still alive. You're still here. Amen. Come on, say, I'm still here. I'm still here. And I'm not going anywhere soon. I'm not going nowhere until my story's finished. And I got, I got little chapters to go. Come on, give God a shout here. You got to, you, see, you got you, you, you to process your life sometimes. You got to go back before you go forward. It's called trajectory. Sometimes you got to pull, go back and just remind yourself, I'm still here. I'm a little banged up. My, my legs hurt a little bit. I, I got some swelling. My nose bleeds a little bit. And the devil's been, but I'm here. I'm alive. Amen. I've been through this, this, and this. God's been faithful. Yes. His word is true. Yes. He died on a cross for me. Amen. You know, come on. Somebody, and you got to kind of re, yes. you got to kind of rehash everything. Yeah. Why? So that it becomes real in you again. So you don't get lazy with what you know. Yeah. And when he sees you taking great effort to relive your story, come on. Come on. rethink it, re yes. revalue him, be grateful yet again for what he did. It just positions you for more. Yes. I said, it just positions you for more. Because yes. if you believed them when you were 20, you should be able to get a healing even easier at 60. Ooh. Why, but if he did it and did it and did it, he's not going to stop just because you got older. Come on. Do you hear me? That is crazy thinking. Well, I was young when I got that healing. Well, so what? Now you're older. You should be able to, if he's God. But the thinking that's in some people. Well, that's when I was going to church and that's when I was reading my Bible. So you think he heals you because you're good. How about he heals you because he's good? Yes. Well, I've been away from God and I'm not with God and I've been away from God. And so then how about all the people in the gospels? None of them were saved. He hadn't even been to the cross yet. So everybody in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they weren't even, you know, they were futuristically looking at the resurrection. Their sins were still in them. So why would he not why would he not heal you on credit? How many, know, how many know what buying stuff on credit is? Let me see. Oh, don't you dare do that to me. How many know what it is? Oh, my Lord. That would sink the ship if we don't tell the truth there. He's rich in mercy. You know, we all know we need to think better, talk better. We need to talk better. How many of us say, I need to talk better? I need to talk better. I need to think better. I need to make better decisions. I need to make better decisions. You see, that you all know, but in the meantime, you need a miracle. Yes, I do. So what do you do if you need all of that and you're, you're kind of headed in that direction, but you're not there yet? Then you've got to pull on some mercy. Yeah, but I don't want a mercy miracle. Ah, we need them. From time to time, we need them. The mercy and the grace, we need them. Until you, until you and I get where we need to be, where we're talking better, thinking better, acting better, giving money better, forgiving people more often, not making them earn their forgiveness because you didn't have to earn yours. He just loved you. Come on, see, I want God to trust me. Come on, see, I want to be trusted. It's one of the greatest things that God could ever say to you is I trust you. I trust you with that anointing. I trust you with that money. I trust you with that position. And that's why, that's why all along the journey, you just give him praise until you just don't know what else to say to him. I just, I just, and it's not how many words you say, it's the depth behind those words. The substantive value of meaning it from your heart. You gotta mean it. When both of our kids were little, we had Billy and Bokeh, and, and, and Billy would always torment Bokeh, and so we'd make Billy go and apologize to Bokeh. So here's how we apologize Sorry, Bokeh. We said, No, Billy, you gotta feel it. Oh, Dad, I don't feel it, but you tell me to do it, so I'll do it. And he would do it and do it for years. He would just say, sorry, bouquet. Give you the whole eye thing. Sorry, bouquet. Sorry, bouquet. And now 
He said, hey, I didn't mean that, and you feel it. Sometimes it takes a little while for your heart to catch up. You got to send your words out there ahead of you. Come on, you say you got to send my steps out of the boat first, and your faith catches up. Sometimes you got to make a move. I got to go. I got to go read. I got to go read the Bible tonight. I was in one revival, and I told this young kid, he's about 18 years old. I said, you know, you need to read the you need to read the scriptures more. You don't. You're empty, kid. You're empty. You got to get something in you. He said, What should I read? I said, Start with John. He came back the next night. I read John. I read all of John. I said, well, go read Matthew. He came back the next night. I just read Matthew. <laughs> he, then he read Mark. Then he read Luke. And he was just, just ingesting this written word. You know, and I can't say, I can't vouch for him. I don't know what he's doing now, where he is. But at least for that time span of that two-week revival, there was significant change in him. Come on, say, I can't worship or read the Bible or speak the word and there not be significant change. I said to Catherine Coleman one time, I, was, I said, Miss Coleman, I said, you're getting a little old. And she said, what did you say, young Billy? She called me young Billy. She said, what did you say, young Billy? I said, you're getting a little bit old to do what you do. And I shouldn't have said it. Okay, get mad at me right now, throw tomatoes. I shouldn't have said it. But I did. And sometimes you are where you are until you change. And she looked at me, she said, young Billy, she said, did you know that that power that goes through me to others touches me first? I never thought about that. I said, I never thought about that. She said, no, you don't think about a lot of things you say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, why don't I just hang out with you? Then I can learn. She says, you want to hang out with me and you want to take what belongs to me. She said, have you ever believed for a quart of milk in your grandmother's refrigerator? I said, what? I'm thinking, what does a quart of milk have to do with this? She said, I'm asking you a question. Have you ever believed for a quart of milk? I said, no, my grandfather buys it. Aha, uh -huh. that's exactly what I thought. She said, when you can believe for that quart of milk, you, then you will talk about you spending more time with me. Until then, you visit me. So I went home to my grandmother. I said, I said, I was with Catherine today, Miss Kuhlman. We didn't call her Catherine. We called her Miss Kuhlman. I said, I was with Miss Kuhlman today, and she did the strangest thing on me. I said, she said, what did she say? She asked me about if I could believe for a quart of milk in the refrigerator. I mean, we know who buys the milk here. And she looked at me. She says, oh, does she know you? Oh, does she? <laughs> She's way ahead of you. She knows you better than you know yourself. All she was saying is you want something for free. You don't want to pay the price. That's what she's saying to you. She said, she's a smart woman. When are you going to go see her again? That's... <laughs> and then Catherine said to me, she said, you know, the way you're going about this, you're going to get everything that's cheap. And she said, what you want that's cheap, Billy, is really, really cheap. She said, pay the price. And of course, you always say, yes, yeah, sign me up. Come on, say, sign me up. And then I start, you start paying the price and you say, take me off the list. <laughs> it's important that what you're going through matters. He's shaping you. The good, the bad, and the ugly, he's shaping you to be who he wants you to be. He wants it to be the written word. He wants it to be the worship. And he wants it to be everything that you do that's right. But even the wrong, of course, if your Bible's the same as mine, he said he works all things together for the good as long as you stay in the purpose of God. Come on, put your hands up and say, I'm going to stay in God's purpose. So I'm not going to get healed to serve the devil. Come on. I'm not going to get healed to sing the devil's songs. I'm not going to get healed to yield to dark stuff. I'm not going back to the bondage. I'm getting healed. I'm getting set free to be a servant of the Most High God. Come on, somebody give God a shout in here tonight. Shout. Because a lot of people just want to get healed to go back. They want to, they want to be healed to keep doing what they want to do. We have those people come to our services. Dancers want to get healed so they can continue to dance in dark places. Yeah. 
people that are selling drugs, they, they just, one girl come up, she's about 21 years old, just, you know, living loose, and she said, I just want a baby. I said, where's your husband? She said, I don't have one. I don't want one. I just want a baby. I said, okay, do you know where you are, young girl? Do you know what kind of a meeting this is? She said, yeah, it's a church meeting, and you believe in miracles, so I come to get one. Clueless. Clueless. And I had to be really careful because I was once lost. I was once in a very dark place, as you all were. Go because your neighbors say, you were, used to be there, right? Tell your neighbor, you used to be there, right? <laughs> then in Toronto, the pastor, I had a man come up, and he wanted to have a baby. He want, no, he didn't want to have, he, and I thought, so you want to have a baby with a girl? He said, no, I want to carry the baby. I said, okay. I said, so wait a minute, I want to get this right. I said, so you want to have, he said, yeah, I don't have the right organs yet in me to have the baby. So again, you believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. We both believe in miracles. So give me a miracle of being able to have all of the right organs to have a baby. You know, three cameras are rolling and he's asking me to do this. And I'm thinking, God, I really need help here real quickly. I'm out on the plank. Blackbeard's after me. Come on, somebody help me here. And I, and I thought, oh, Lord. And I said, yeah, just put your hands up. And of course, I didn't grant him the prayer request that he wanted. We don't just give people what they ask for. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Come on, see, I got to give people what they need, not always what they want. Right? Is that right? Is that what your Bible says? Acts chapter 3. I said, put your hands up. You put his hands up. And I said, okay, here we go. And the whole time I'm getting ready to pray, I didn't have any idea what I was going to pray. And I didn't want to rebuke them. I just didn't feel like I was supposed to rebuke them. You know, you're a man, you're not a woman. God's not going to give you all that. I'd like the Holy Spirit to be my hit man. He's so good at it. Come on, say, no blood on the floor. Come on. He is so good at doing stuff. He is just amazing. So I, he, he, this guy puts his hands on me. I said, Holy Spirit, I said, touch this man. Heal him on the inside. Give him such a mighty deliverance. He'll never forget it. Help him really get back to his origins and discover who he is and, and who he was meant to be. And just cause this man to leap like hind's feet on high places. And I just touched him. He went under the power. He, he said, wow. He said, I felt something moving all through me. He said, what do you think that was? Well, it wasn't the baby. It wasn't the baby. <laughs> but I do believe it was the Holy Ghost. You know what he said? I can't thank you enough. He wasn't mad. He didn't say, I didn't ask for that. See, God has a way. Come on, say, God has a way. God has a way. Of eclipsing wrong thinking. Yes. Of removing all the bad stuff you're after. And giving you a Holy Ghost break to really move in a better direction. Come on, put your hands up. Say, I'm headed in a better direction tonight. I'm headed in a better direction tonight. I'm not going backwards, I'm going forwards. And God's about to visit me. The heavens are about to open. I'm walking out of here healed tonight. I'm walking out healed, happy, and whole. Come on. Give him a mighty, mighty shout. Can you do that? Come on, a mighty, 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 mighty shout. Do we have anybody from this morning that had a, a powerful touch this morning? Anybody in the meeting tonight had a powerful touch? Come on, come up to me right now, real quick. If you were here this morning, and God touched you in a special way. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry, hurry, just hurry. Come quickly. Don't we don't go all night here tonight? Ma'am, what happened to you this morning? Well, um, I couldn't find the hernias. And you had hernias and you couldn't find them? Yeah, I couldn't find them. I had at least three. You had at least three hernias? Yeah. And they're gone? They're gone. Yeah. And I'm healed from rejection. And you got healed of rejection? <laughs> yeah. See, the rejection is really cool because that, that's such a destructive force that'll, that'll travel through your whole life. But when you get into the hernia category, now you're getting into what you can actually see and feel. So the, the, that's, why, that's, why, that's why a notable miracle when the man at the gate was healed 
called it a notable because people could see it. <laughs> it's hard for people to contend with who God is whenever there's something that's visible, physical. And it disappears or changes, shifts. Yes. It's incredible. What's it going to take for God to convince you that he's on your side? That your old life is past? That you are really a forgiven person? I'm going to be talking tomorrow morning in the morning session. I'd really like you to be here, but in my 44 years, and it's just what I see, what I've learned, what's one of the biggest hindrances to people getting a manifested miracle. I'm going to talk about that tomorrow morning. So if you can find your way out here, if you have to rent a boat to get here, come on, say amen. <laughs> Whatever you've got to do to get here tomorrow morning, that, that begins at 10 o'clock. This morning we had such a great turnout and the people were so excited. So this is amazing, hernia. Three of them in one yeah. body. Yeah. And, and you went home and they're not there. They're not there. What did you think when that happened? I knew where they went. Oh, you did? Yeah. God took care of them. Mm -hmm. Where do you go to church? Here. Oh, my word. Yes. I go to school here. You go to school too? Yes. <laughs> and what's your favorite class? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> They're all favorites. They're all favorites. Uh -huh. Holy Spirit. Tell people about your story, okay? About, I will. About the three hernias. Yes. You'll blow them away. I know. <laughs> That's great. It's one of the ways that God weaponizes you before you get to know the Word of God. I mean, there's no replacement for the Word of God, but until you learn the Word, the secret weapon of your life is what He did for you. Sometimes we, gotta, we probably should be quiet till we learn it a little bit better. Say amen. <laughs> Because you can be challenged on that. You, anybody can challenge you on what you believe scripturally. But they can't challenge you. They can't refute you. Whenever you say, I was blind and now I see. Yes. Right. You know, I had five lumps and now they're gone. Come on. You know, I was a prostitute by night and a housewife by day and I've been delivered. So when you get into Las Vegas and Reno and those places, that, that's a lot of the activity there. They go to church, they work, and then they prostitute at night. And their minds are seared. They have no sense of direction. Their moral compass is broke. And God has to deliver people. Aren't you glad God is still delivering people? Yes. How many is glad for that? Let me see. How many is glad? Yes. I'm so happy for you. I don't know what Thank to you. say. Three hernias is a, quite a bit of work for God to do. No. He just spoke it. He just spoke it. Touch your dear Jesus. Touch your dear Jesus. Come on, hurry, ma'am. Hurry. Young girl. Oh, there's that young girl. What? Okay, you had one pink shoe and one red shoe. Why do you do that? Um, I think my feet are growing and I need new shoes. So I'm trying to figure out which shoe works better. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Fort Worth, Texas and stuff like that happen. Yeah. She has one pink shoe, really pink, and one right. burgundy they were shoe. Given to me. They were given, but you're not sure which one you want. I think I want that one uh -huh. because this one has the orthotic in it, uh -huh. and I I want to grow out of the orthotics. You do. So tell me what happened this morning. Um, I was touched with the veins and the pressure in the ears and all the. And way it down. left. That all left. All the way down to the feet. And it left you. And it left. He's still working on the back and the neck, uh -huh. and it just cracks now, so. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. And a few years ago, you prayed for my feet. I had green toenail polish, uh -huh. and I had bunions on my feet, uh -huh. and the bunions uh, disappeared about nine months later. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, if you keep this up, if you keep a journal of your miracles, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, look out. You'll be unstoppable. You'll be an unstoppable force of righteousness. This, this disease of forgetting and not remembering is, is horrible. It nullifies a lot of your weaponry and the ability for God to anoint you. The greatest thing is, what has he done for you? That's what people want to know. What's he done for you? Be ready to tell them. Be unashamed. So what that you did that? So, that? so what you went through that? So what you had that surgery? So what? He hung on a cross for us naked. He took a brutal beating. 
He suffered horribly. He un unrecognizable, Isaiah said. Unrecognizable. Nothing that it was comely. Nothing that we would ever want to be. And he wasn't, you know, a great-looking movie star that had a nice shave and a, and a wind-blown haircut. He was unrecognizable. He suffered for us. Come on, say, he took the curse. He took the curse. He went to hell and took the keys. He went to hell and took the keys. And he came back from hell. Come on, somebody give God a shout. He came back with the keys. He came back with the keys. That's the new Mel Gibson movie. That's the second sequel he's coming out with of him coming off the cross, going down in there and getting those keys. Somebody say, give me those keys. Give me those keys. Mm, 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 mm. I'm so happy for you. Tell your story. Make sure you testify. I will. I wanted to show you that I can also like, move all the way. With you couldn't do that before. No, like the screws are, oh, the still, screws. are still in there, so... To move them, it would make it stiff and. And now you can do that. I can do. In both legs. In both. Yeah. That and means it had balance on this side. So. That means where did the screws go? They're 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 leaving, as you can see. They, this one you can see. Okay. But I can still move it. Movement is better than anything. But I mean, I still know that God can do more. Give Him praise for this young girl. Wow, they're powerful. Come to me, ma'am. Quickly, quickly, beautiful. What happened to you, ma'am? Well, um, when I was under, after you, yeah. you know, I was under the uh -huh. spirit, um, the Lord made it so clear to me where the brokenness was oh. in my husband and what was causing this behavior uh -huh. and um, how actually all these years I've been inadvertently exacerbating the whole problem and it was just this vicious cycle. Wow. The more I would act in a certain way, the more he would act in a certain way wow. and it was just beautiful and just so, so you know, like I can do this on my own so so easily because I'm so sensitive to the spirit and I got to get home tonight. I live in Weatherford so if you like lay hands on me again, I'm going down and I may be here in the morning so like, I'm good. <laughs> Where are these people coming from? <laughs> Who are these people? You aren't the group they bust over the border, are you? Come on. <laughs> this is incredible. Like, yeah, it's all but good. she's so sincere. That's what it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Man, okay. Psalm 51, what does God say? I desire truth on the inward part of you. It's called integrity. It's called sincerity and integrity and self-honesty. Don't lie to yourself. Don't live a lie. Live the truth. Be truthful with yourself. How can God help you if you're not truthful? I just think it's great. You said, but you, you accepted something, responsibility. In Absolutely. It. He just made it so crystal clear. 22 years, I have been praying for what is that in his heart? And he just laid it out so beautifully to where I was like, how could I not have seen that and see how I was... So she's under it. the power, and what, and what happens is see, you under the power. You don't know what he's doing. Right. Could be a healing. Could be opening up your eyes. Impartation. Impartation. Yes. Could be a, a memory thing. Could be go call somebody thing. He has no idea any of this is going on mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't been home since this morning. I live about an hour away, so it should be interesting. You don't. You know. said what? What? <laughs> to whom? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Pray for her husband tonight, please. I am so good. I am so good. What's that mean? I'm so good. I'm like, look, honestly, I, I, I can do that all by myself with him. Like, just like, I'm so sensitive to the spirit. So like, thank you. Thank you. I'm good. Somebody say glory, hallelujah. Come on. What are these people feeding you out here? <laughs> Incredible. Ma'am, what, what, what? Here's the couple here. Oh. I prayed for both of us yes. today. And Look my, at you. My husband had a good afternoon. He did. He didn't have pain. Oh. He said he tried, was trying to do what you told him yes. to do. Uh -huh. And uh, he had a, you gave him hope. You know, Good. He kind of got 
you know, living with it. That's the way it was. But would you pray for both of our memories? <laughs> uh -huh. How are we doing with the straightening out? How's that going? Look at that. You can praise the Lord now. And uh, when I was laying on the floor. Yeah. And I said I could straighten my legs. Yeah. Up. It was like every bone in my back right here went. Just moved. It's, it's moved, and I said, I can straighten my legs up, and I did, and I can now. Uh, and also, we prayed. Let's go a little bit more. Come on. Amazing. You're doing amazing. You're, you're a miracle in motion. You're doing amazing. And we prayed for my heart. Uh, my veins going to my heart that yeah. stopped up, and I've got a peace about it. You got peace. I got peace. I've, I've had peace, but today I got more peace. You got more peace. Yes. Your wife got hope and more hope. Yes, that's right. I think you're both going to make it. I know I am. <laughs> Is that for a long, satisfying life. A long, satisfying yeah. life. Yeah. He, that's what he so promised. you're signing up with him for another whatever, right? Yes, yes. Her you're signing up time. with her for another whatever, right? That's right. Another 43 years. Another 43 years. Yes. Holy Ghost, touch both, yes. touch both, touch yes. both, touch both. Come on, somebody give God a big shout. Come on. Hurry, ma'am. Hurry, ma'am. Hurry, 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 hurry. What, what, what? What happened to you today? Well, you prayed for the arteries. Yes. Yes. And when I fell, yes, um, I was burning up in my head. Oh was my! Burning and uh -huh. you know, and it came down this way. That's amazing. Thank you. Has your breathing been better? Your energy been better? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. And you thanked them for it? Oh yes. You did thank well, them today. Well, maybe not enough, but I will. Not enough. I mean, you thank can't you. Thank I you. I praise enough. you. Yeah. I thank you. I praise you. Yeah. Come on, say I thank you. I thank. You. I praise you. I give you glory. You're the most amazing God there is. You're the only wise God. Come on, I owe you everything. I give you my life all over again. Take me, touch me, move through me, possess me, Holy Ghost. I owe you it all. I mean, think of things to say. Try. I don't know what to say. Try. Try. You can come up with creative phrases to express your love, your gratitude. Do your best. Do better. She even said I could do more. What happened here, ma'am? What's that? Rheumatoid, Rheumatoid arthritis in the hands? Everywhere. Everywhere. Remember I had the infusion? Oh, the infusion. And what happened? Well, I'm you're not okay. Hurting anywhere. Yeah. Are you feel good? Is that amazing to good. you? You asked me about church. Oh, did I ask I you? Don't. I don't belong to a church. Oh, you I don't. Go to church, you go to church. But I'm looking for a church. But you're, where do you live, Facebook. sweetheart? Where I'm in Mena, Arkansas. Is you in Arkansas? Yeah. Okay. And how long are you here? Today and tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're supposed to be helping me here, so. They're supposed to be helping you? Who's supposed be, to be? Oh, I don't know. Whoever the, I talk to. The churches? To, yeah. Oh, are they? And they're going to help you with. They're going to, yeah. Somebody's supposed to get back with me. Uh-huh. And help you with, what, living? Finding or? a church. Finding a church. <laughs> I'm in a church. I'm so glad you, you you didn't come by yourself though, right? No, you just you just had three of my family members here on the floor. On the floor. Yeah. <laughs> the couple and then. Do they always go on the floor? Your family? No. no. <laughs> they don't always go on the floor. Well, we like to floor you around here. So. <laughs> yeah. You're such a your, your your countenance is so radiant. Thank you. There's such a peace in you, isn't there? Yes. You love Jesus, don't I you? I do. Oh, it's, it's just wonderful. Come on, somebody give God a big shout here. Praise beautiful God. man, beautiful. Come on, let me hurry up, sir, with the orange shirt. Come on. What's going on here, man? Well, you prayed for me. Yeah. I had that brain tumor. Yeah. I didn't tell you I had spinal stenosis in ah. my neck. I've had uh, three stents in my heart. I had a Widowmaker. Oh. You had and, a Widowmaker blockage? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And uh, the Lord... Uh, my neck hurt so bad when I hit the floor, Billy. Um, it just, Pastor Billy, it just, and now it's not hurting anymore like it was. And God told me, he said, you go back 
and he said, Pastor Billy is not done with you yet. I am not done what with you What if Pastor yet. Billy says I am done with you? What do you do with that? <laughs> That's what God, I kept hearing from the Lord. And he said, I am not done yet. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. He, and he I brought, feel huh? that power of God. You do right yes, now. Sir. You're feeling it right now. Yes, well, then you enjoy it. Just enjoy it. <laughs> I remember, now, she came in with these big Hollywood sunglasses on today. <laughs> and see I, those bright lights? Yeah. I can see them with no problem. Oh, my gosh. But I forgot to tell you one thing. What? My daughter. Your daughter? Was attacked in 2018. What? She's here, so can you pray for her before she you She was leave? attacked by who? Not by a person, but by uh, an illness. An illness? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is she here? She is. This is the daughter? Mm -hmm. She's got those Hollywood glasses on, too. <laughs> What's going on here, daughter? Oh, wait a minute. So your eyes are okay. That's that. Oh yeah. Hi. <laughs> okay. I volunteered for a Kufi event in 2018, and my face was paralyzed that night, and I'm not whoa, whoa, whoa. been able to what? smile. Slow. You did what? Volunteered for a Kufi event in 2018, and my face was paralyzed that night. I've not been able to smile in over four years. Wow. So how'd that happen? What was the actual, how did it happen? Um, I've had a doctor say it was Bell's palsy, nerve paralysis. I've had a, a word of knowledge from someone who said it was a, a, a poison, that I ingested a poison somehow. It don't, don't look like Bell's palsy to me. I see a lot of Bell's palsy. There's no Bell's palsy there. You picked up a transfer. Oh, where are you? Picked up a transfer. That's why you, that's why you abide in the word of God. That's why you stay full of the Spirit. Jesus said in John 14, the devil came and found no place. He couldn't get in my head. He couldn't get in my speech. Couldn't get in my emotions. Come on, say, every door locked. Every, door locked. every window closed. Every window closed. No, way no way to get in. You want to make sure of that. You want to make sure of that. Because when there's always an open door somewhere or an open window somewhere, you can pick something up. They're just flying around, just waiting to connect out there. Evil people carry passengers. People that wait, carrying your food carry passengers. People care, giving you a, a bag at Dillard's or a, you know, wherever. People out there have passengers. I don't mind getting this shirt, but I don't want a shirt and a passenger. Come on, see, I don't want any passengers. So whenever you leave a department store, or you, before you go into your house, hopefully you just, if you sense that, then you just say, man, get off of me. Just get off of me. Just shake it off. Don't take something home that you don't want to deal with. But you want to grow to the point where the devil says, I bit the wrong person. Come on, say amen. He bit Paul, and then Paul said he just, he choked that snake off dead. And that's what you want. She's picked up a transfer from somebody, somewhere. Put your hands up. This paralysis will leave. It's going to leave your face tonight. You'll be able to move your face and smile again, lady, because the power is coming back on you. Because you're going to get realigned with destiny. You got out of line with destiny. Whatever you did, man, you got out of the line, but you're back in line with that destiny from God. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Can anybody get a little bit happier? A little bit happy. You. you just can't keep getting stuff from God. I mean, his, his, his love is unconditional, but his grace isn't. The promises are unconditional. You know, you do this and you get this. You know, you... Delight yourself in me and I give you desires. You, you do this and your days, as your days, so will your strength be. Those promises are conditional. His love isn't. Sometimes we get that mixed up. So you start dabbling into that stuff and you get a mixture. And that mixture is the deadliest thing you can ever get because you can't smell it or see it, but it, your prayers don't work. You can't resist the wrong things. They came out of Egypt. They didn't have just Israelites. They were mixed. They had a lot of Egyptians with them. The mixed multitude, they were called. 
Come on, say the mixed multitude. So it wasn't just a bunch of people ungrateful that were slaves in Egypt. They were grateful, but some of those people took advantage of them going up. They said, we're going with you. But they still had the worship of those other gods. They still had the lifestyle of that, that Egyptian stuff. So there was mixture in those people. That's where the golden cow came out of a mixed people. That mixture. You've got to get that mixture out. Come on, you've got to get the mixture out. We mix word with faith. That's the mixture we want. Word with faith. Come on, word with faith. Say word with faith. That's the good mixture. Oil and wine, good mixture. Surely goodness and mercy, good mixture. Rod and staff, good mixture. Holy Ghost music and savage music, bad mixture. Welcome Holy Spirit, get off my cloud. Bad, bad mixture. Come on, say bad mixture. Best as you can, best as you can, if you want to see, if you want to see what you say you want to see, then just cultivate that. One girl said to me, you sound just like my mother. You sound just like my mother. I said, well, maybe your mother's right. Maybe your mother's anointed. Get off your mother. She said, well, I just don't believe in any of you, anything either one of you say. I said, well, then tell me about the blue Mustang you were in a year ago, the blue Mustang. Tell me about the blue Mustang. She said, oh, my God, my mother told you about the blue I said, I didn't even talk to your mother. Well, how'd you know about a blue Mustang? Because God just told oh, now God's telling you about the blue Mustang. I said, how else would I know, girl? How else would I know? She said, I just can't believe you people. Come on, some people, it takes them a while to begin to think, man, God knows everywhere I go. He knows everything I do. He knows everything I watch. Come on, he knows everything that I listen to. Come on, put your hands up and say, that's why I need the grace and mercy. Come on. Come on, say, I need my mind so renewed. And it's going to start this weekend. Come on, I'm going to get God thoughts. I'm going to get God talk. I'm going to get to go the ways of the Spirit. I'm tired of this other stuff. Come on, dead end streets. Come on, broken down houses. Haunted houses. Demons everywhere. Scary movies. I'm tired of all of it. I'm going to go God's way. Come on, everybody give him a shout. Come on, give him, God. Give him a mighty shout. Come on, come on, come on. Let's pick this lady up. I want to, I'm anxious to see this face. Pick her up here. What's her name? What's your daughter's name? Courtney. 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 You moved it. It's moving. Your face yeah. is moving. You see it? You, huh? you feel your face? Feel. You feel it? Somebody better give God a shout. Somebody, come on, give me. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Come on, to God, to God be the glory. For the things He has done. That's it, David. With His blood, He has Come on, with His power. He Come on, say the name to God. Be the for the things, for the things he, he has done. What do you think of this young girl? Oh, I am so grateful. So, so grateful. Your whole face is moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you glad you came tonight? Absolutely. Have you given your life back to God? Have you done that? Oh, I've always been saved. I worked on a reservation and I worked, I was a student at a university with a Wiccan warlock. Oh, Lord. And um, he would attack me and a priest it was a Catholic university to attack us all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, praise the Lord God. Put praise your hands up. God. I want you praying for the sick right away. Pray for sick people right sick away. You hear me? God's going to use you to bring healing to a lot of people. So Come on, somebody give God... 
What happened here? Hurry up, what happened? Healed from type 1 diabetes. Oh, mom, tell me about it. How do you know? Because I feel him. No, but tell me how you know with the evidence. The evidence. What's your, I just, my, what's your count? What is your sugar? You came in. I know it was dropping today. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's horrible. Oh, my word. Yes. Is that the right amount? Is that? I don't really know because I have my kit over there. Would you go get that kit to get? Yes. But don't do it in front of me this time. Don't do it in front of me. I don't like needles or blood or anything like that. How many don't like needles or blood, anything like that? I ne you need the test. I don't know. Where's my, friend, my, my friends right here? My, what, 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 what? Uh, I, I had a hernia. Yeah. So before I came this morning, yeah. when I stand there, I felt the pain. Right now, no. No <laughs> more. No more. <laughs> <laughs> but are you still excited? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So You were so, excited today. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't. You what? I couldn't control it. You could <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and uh, before. The what? I had a tightness in my heart. A what? But, a tenderness? A what? Tightness. Tightness. But right now, no more. No more there either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty excited. Thanks, Lord. What's that? Thanks, Lord. Thanks, God. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank God. Thanks a lot. Thanks a Lord. Thank the Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, sometimes you need more than you know anything after. You need <laughs> all the interpreters you can get. This is where do you live again? You live somewhere uh, close. South Lake. South Lake. South Lake. South Lake. Texas. Texas. I got that one. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Thank you for your help, but I got it. <laughs> This is a wonderful, I think. Yeah. Don't you think so? Yeah. To have a hernia disappears. Amazing. Yeah. And the wife, what do you think about this, the wife? It's amazing for him, yeah. And for you, too. Yeah, I, I have been on chemotherapy for three months. Who, who, you? Me. Uh -huh. I have a anesthetic stomach cancer. It's all over my belly. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. So, so how is this here? Today you said you felt different here. Um, my energy level has been, um, today is the best. You the know, best ever. is? Yeah. But I still feel the, ton, uh, the extension. I still feel the distension of my um, belly. Okay. But, uh, I, my energy level has been up. Energy level up, cancer cells die. Yeah. yeah. Cancer cells take energy out of you. Yeah. The fact that your energy is up, cancer cells are dying as you stand here. Yes. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, somebody. Come on, give God a mighty shout. Your name is higher than any other. Your name is higher than any other. That's normal. That's normal. A hundred. A hundred. And he's, I'm growing a new thyroid. You're growing a new I'm thyroid. I'm growing a new thyroid. Yes. So you get in this atmosphere of faith and stuff happens like that. But you gotta, you gotta let your, your brain and all the negative thinking be canceled. Yes. Come on, say, with God. With, with God. God. All things. All things. My thing. My thing. Is possible. Are possible. Now, if your wife don't want to agree with you, and she, and then you gotta say, honey, now you heard what he said tonight. We were both in the same meeting. Or if the husband gets a little contrary, well, I don't know about this. I mean, you know, I didn't say, I mean, you know, I don't know. Then you guys say, well, baby, you were with me tonight. Sometimes you got to hold people's feet to the fire a little bit. Not in a mean way. My grandmother would always say, Billy, prayer changes things. I would say, no. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. She said, well, prayer changes things. Prayer just changes things. Just make me so mad. Like, fight with me. Do something. Be contrary, but don't just be so nice and say prayer changes things. But she was right. Prayer changed everything. Come on, say amen. Sometimes you've got to go in the back door of a person's life and work while they don't let you work. You've got to go back there and work. Nobody can guard their back door. You can work in anybody's back door with your prayers, with your faith, with your love.
I left him go and he'll come to his senses. Well, before he does, get in that back door. Say those prayers. Prophetically plant those words. What you see missing, you plant. Plant the opposite of what you see missing. Start pulling the weeds in their garden. And believe for a miracle. See, if you, the more you do, then the more you can expect. But if you do nothing, you expect nothing. All you do is bring up emotion. Well, I really want them, but what have you done? Have you prayed? Have you sowed some seed? Have you done something to really cause expectation to rise to a level that's not natural? See, then you begin to be an anomaly to the people around you. So when you talk and, and it was such, with such confidence, they wonder, where are you getting all that confidence? Well, you've prayed prayers. You've sowed seed. You've made a declaration. You've forgiven some people. You have every right to expect the heavens are about to open in your favor. Come on, see, my obedience creates expectation. Expectation comes from somewhere. It comes from somewhere. You obey God and send that email, that encouraging email. God sees that. He's, he's a rewarder of God. He's not going to let you obey, 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 and get nothing back. God does not want to owe you. <laughs> tell your neighbor, you're the wrong person to owe. Come on, tell somebody that. <laughs> it's so true, isn't it? This is so exciting, this type one. It's, it's being wonderfully taken care of. You, you do. I trust them. I want to say I trust them. I praise them. I give my life to him. Come on, somebody give God a shout. I'll tell you what. Come on. Ma'am, what happened to you? Um, I got healed of my hands. I had so much pain in my hands before. So much pain? Yes. And why was that? Why did you have that pain? Um, from working COPD is being healed. Somebody with COPD being wonderfully healed. Where are you? COPD. Come on, I think, I believe you're sleeping with the CPAP mask as well. Who are you? You're in the room tonight. Don't be ashamed of this quickly. You won't even need the CPAP mask after tonight. Where are you? Where are you? COPD. Come on. Come on. Come on. I, I just don't want you to be hindered by this anymore. It's a horrible thing to not be able to breathe or you're sleeping. Your breathing stops at night. Whenever you're sleeping, you're, you're breathing. Your heart actually stops. It's a deadly thing. And I'd just like you to get up here and get this fixed. Quickly. Here she comes. Or here he comes. Is that my friend coming again? Oh, Lord. You better get healings. This guy will eat your lunch. I'm telling you what. This, if you turn your head, he'll steal your bagel. I'll tell you right now. What, what, what happened? You have COPD? You fighting? Yes, sir. I got COPD, and I have, uh, I have severe chronic. Why did it take you so long to get up here? My sister kept pushing. I said, I don't want to go and bother him no more. You, know? she said, you don't want to bother me talking. anymore. You're the only one standing here. Who's bothering me? I mean... Is somebody else over here with COPD? Who? You, sweetheart, come to me. They did a what on you? A scope, okay. but they've never been able to diagnose it. And um, last night, um, I got up with the heart palpitation, and I, was, I couldn't breathe. And I don't know if my heart stops or what it does. I'm not sure. I can't say that it does that, but... I had an ache so bad under, under my, um, in my stomach. And the it power's hurt. on him. I wouldn't leave, leave him there, guys. Hey, it guys, hurt all the way up to he's, my chest. It's not good to get up yet. Well, go ahead, ma'am. I'm listening. Go ahead. It hurt all the way up to my chest, but I get heart palpitations constantly. Uh -huh. Like, sometimes I can't even eat. I don't know. They've never been able to find it, but you said heart. And I've been walking in my healing, and I'm believing for my healing. Well, tonight you're going to receive. Okay. You believe and then receive. Yes. You don't just believe to believe. Yes. I stay believing. You don't just keep faithing it. Yes. No, I stay You faith believing. it. Come on, say, I faith it to see it. I faith it to see it. I don't see it to faith it, but I faith it so I can see it. That's right. There's a goal here. Yes. Well, I'm standing in faith. Yeah, I know, but it's been a long, long time. Do you, do you really want to see it? Do you want to hold it? Make sure that's, make sure that's, in, the, that's in the equation. I want to run again. I want to walk again. I want to sleep all night again. I want to get that organ back. Come on, I didn't want to lose that organ. I want to get that, whatever that organ was taken out of you. 
I want to get the, the feeling back where it's numb. Come on, say amen. Amen. I want to get my memory back. Yes. yes. Amen. No, oh, I don't know who I'm talking to here tonight. I don't know. I think that storm hit you on the way here or something. Come on. Come on, say, I want everything back. I want everything back. That the devil stole from me. The devil stole from me. It is coming back. It is coming back. I declare it's back right now. I'm taking it home with me tonight. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Come on. Come on, sir, over here. Come on over here. So do you, do you sleep with the mask? Yes, sir. See, see, that's even God said that, and you still didn't come up with it. Yeah, I was suffering. you got to quit man. this stuff. I know. I'm, I just, you know, I don't, I feel bad to keep running up here, you know. I, I feel bad to keep praying for you, too. <laughs> I know. I want to get you checked off the list here. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> You're becoming a full-time altar goer right here. We're going to give you a job with one of the catchers. You keep coming up here. Put your hands up. You're a likable young man, I'll tell you that. No, you're likable. You're, you're, you're just a likable person. And you bring, a lot of, you bring a lot of humor to people. People trust you. They like being in your presence. Don't believe those lies that you have to be somebody else or you wish you were somebody else. You're perfectly for who you're supposed to be. You hear me? You're perfect for who you're supposed to be. He's going to sweep through this system of yours. He's going to scrape you. Ezekiel 26, 4, he will scrape you. Do you hear me tonight? Yes, What's he going to do? Scrape me. Oh. Come on over here, sweetheart. What's the one? Tell, me how you're, tell me your name. Karen. Karen, where are you from? from? Well, I live in Dallas, but I'm from Lubbock. You're from where? Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock, Texas. Mm -hmm. and, and the formal diagnosis is what? They said um, gastritis. And you're being treated for that? No, there's nothing they can do for me. What do you mean there's nothing they can do? I mean, they give you like a little acid pill, but that doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Put your hands up. When's the last time you felt the power just go through you? I don't know. I felt the power go through me, but I seen my dad, my son. When's the last time you felt that holy, holy presence? When my son came out dead out of me and God brought him to life. When your son died and God brought him back to life. Well, get ready for another experience. Okay. They may have to carry you to your car. <laughs> Do you mind if people carry you to the car? No. Go ahead, say they can carry me. They to can the carry me. To the car. To the car. Okay. She's in the way right here. Can you remove this lady right from the... She's right in the intersection right here. Look at this. There's nowhere to go. I have a trip over her. I, I can turn around. Maybe move back a little bit, ma'am. There you go. Put your hands up. Come on, say, I receive... I receive... The Holy Spirit... The Holy Spirit... Into my life. Into my life. He will separate me... He will separate from me... From everything wrong... From everything wrong... That it means people... That means people... Relationships... Relationships... Places... Places... And things... And things... He's about to separate me... He's about to separate there's me... There's a purging power... From, there's a purging power... Going through power. my body... Going through my body... Oh, that power! Come on, somebody better give God a shout! Woo! Leave her alone. Now, we were talking about your hands, right? Yes. Uh, I had pain in my hands uh, every day. I would have so much pain in my hands. And this was caused because of nerve damage. Yeah. So I couldn't do even... Lady, that's, that what you're feeling right there is the Holy Spirit. That's what you're feeling. Whatever happened to you before at nighttime and going to bed, that, that curse is broken. Whatever thing came on you has left you. It's incredible. Put your hands up. I just don't know what to do with you. You're already a happy person. And you have joy. And you love the Lord. You're sold out. God is good. You confess the scriptures. God is so good. Mm -hmm. So today I was able to do some of the things that I couldn't do. After you prayed for me, I, I mean, I lay there, I could feel heat on my face. Heat? I, yeah, like I, I had this warmth. Then I was like thinking, um, let me try clapping my hands oh. because I would have so much pain. So I clapped my hands. I could still feel a bit of pain when I left. But then I did what you said. Afterwards, I was, the whole day, whilst I was at home waiting for this evening service, I was clapping my hands and I 
felt no pain. Oh. And um, I, I You're wouldn't... allowed to clap for that. Come on, you're allowed to clap for that. Even, even holding my Hallelujah. cell phone was painful if I held my cell phone, but I spent about 30 minutes in the lobby there just holding my phone. I was just like, I'm not feeling any pain. Uh, I have my family here. They have witnessed the pain that I've gone through, and now I am healed. And I thank God. I, I, I didn't think I couldn't even drive anymore because I'd lost, like, control of, you know, I would have Come sudden check I would have jackings on my hands and all like Everybody, hallelujah. There it goes, man. There it goes. There it goes. The Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. That's it. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. You can't walk too good, can you? Huh? I think I can get up. <laughs> you what? Hallelujah. Ah, I'm telling you, they're going to carry her out those doors right there. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, big guy, right here at the blue shirt. On. You, yeah, you, yeah, you. The blue shirt, yes, come to me, sir. What's going on here? Who are you? What do you do here? What, who are you? What do you do? Uh, I go to KCVC. You what? I go to KCVC. You go to the Bible school? Yes, sir. What, what year are you in? Uh, this is my first semester. You're, what do you think of it? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Is it changing you or oh, what? Yes, yes. Since I've been here, everything just changed. You know, there's another COPD that did not come up. I don't need to do this. I don't need to come back after you. I mean, I could, I could look really bad here, but you're here. You're in this audience. And it could be over so quickly. I don't know why you're not coming up here, but I just, I'm going to make one more. Where are you? Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Is that her? Is that you? You better get over here. Hallelujah. You better get over here. I apologize. You apologize. Don't apologize. I, I've never been diagnosed. You never did what? I've never been diagnosed, but my husband used to tell me all the time that I would stop breathing at night and he would just wait for me. That's to start COPD. Breathing. That's COPD. And then last week I got diagnosed with hypertension and I've never had it before. Well, lady, you're about to get rid of everything. Ha! Ah, the Holy Ghost on that woman. Come on, give him a shout. Hallelujah. Pick this lady up. I, I know she's not a good to be laying down there like that. Man, what'd you think of that? Uh, huh? Uh, what? My heart is racing. What? My heart is racing. <sighs> oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You want to stay back, stay there and lay down? You want to get back up? What do you want to do? I want to get up. You want to do what? I want to get back up. You do? Yes. Thank you. This is different. What? This is different. I never deal with feelings. Yeah? I never say, I want to feel. Okay. I always say, I just want to trust you. Yeah. But now I, I actually feel the presence of Oh, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. 
We don't live for those, but, but you faith it to feel it. You faith it to see it. Come on, say, I don't faith it to faith it. I faith it to see it. I faith it to feel it. It's a great thing if it's in its proper protocol. It's great. So what do you do for a living? You work? I'm a second year KCBC student. Oh, you're a second year KCBC? Yes. But I'm a pastry chef by trade. You're what? Pastry chef. A pastry chef. Oh, I love you by the moment here. I'll tell you that. <laughs> What's your favorite thing you make? Uh, seven up cake. Seven up cake? Yes. I never heard of seven up cake. <laughs> Lord. Bless <laughs> I'll be more than happy to make you one. You what? I'll be more than happy to make you one. Just give me, give me an idea of what it's, what it's about. It's like pound cake with oh. a lemon glaze. Oh. And there's only seven ingredients in it. Oh. So it's just butter, sugar, flour, eggs, seven up, vanilla, and lemon juice. Okay. I'm glad you enjoyed that, but she's making it for me. Not you. You're not going to have this problem with your sleeping. You're not going to die in your sleep. You're not going to stop breathing in your sleep. Praise God. Your life has just changed tonight. Yes. Absolutely. And you're worth it. Praise God. I don't know who told you you weren't worth this and you weren't worth that, but God tonight deems you worthy and worth it. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. Thank you. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Come on, big guy. So you're, you're in the KCM college, right? Yes, sir. So what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to do? Uh, <laughs> I just want to preach the word. That's all. That's it. Just want to preach just the word. Just want to preach the word. That's it. Uh-huh. And live for God. That's it. So Kenneth Copeland, you're one of your favorite yes, sir. role models. Yes, sir. You like the way he does it? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. You want to just follow him? Yes, sir. As he follows God? Yes, sir. That's incredible. Yes, sir. You picked a good one, didn't you? Yes, sir. You started at the top. Put your hands up. Holy Ghost, we thank you. That's a great thing, you know, when someone, you're right here, and you, sometimes you forget the greatness that's in this house. And don't forget Pastor George over here. This guy's amazing, and he's amazing. I mean, he is America's pastor to me. He's America's pastor. I'm telling you right now. I think you're my pastor. I don't know about that, but I think you might be my pastor. But don't start telling me what to do, though, but I think you might be. <laughs> it's amazing, these people, what they do here, what they handle here. Amen. Not just one, two, or ten, but thousands. From the bottom of the world to the... And all the way... And see, you know. You know. Something going on here. Put your hands up. The curse of your forefathers is being broken over you. That's your big, your, your big, you're trying to get away from that pattern of your forefathers. And there was stuff going on there that was just trying to latch onto you and ruin your life. But God has brought you here tonight for one reason, to snap that curse, to uproot that bondage, and to let you be, notice short, you will never, never go that way. Never. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, do you know how to praise him? Do you know how to praise him? If you, see, if you can't put the time in to do all that you need to do, then you need to get someone like Pastor George and Brother Cope and someone that's paving the way and just get in their wake. Get in the shadows of great people. That's all I've done my whole life as God has just enabled me to be in the right place to get in the shadows of some great people and just, you know, glean behind that wagon. 
Come on, say, I want to be a gleaner. In the right field, behind the right wagon, and end up in the right place. That's what Ruth did. That's what you can do. Get out of that field you're in. It's, not, it's starving you. It's corrupting you. It's creating a mixture. You go to this church that don't believe in that, then you go to this church that believes in this. How do you end up right? Well, I get down there, but they don't really believe in miracles. Well, what are you doing down there then? Well, but I just like him. Is he worth you sacrificing a major principle of the gospel? Are you kidding me? Come on, say, I can't take everybody with me. I can't take everybody with me. If I want to go forward into the deeper waters, I can't take everybody with me. Look at the years you have in your life, the years you think you have left, and say, hey, I got to go for this. I loved him. He was great for that season, but I've moved on into deeper water. Bring that big kid up. He's a big guy, isn't he? Well, not really, but bigger than me, I'll tell you that. Did that make sense to you? Yes. I, I, you struggle with that? Yes, sir. Did you feel something break? Yes, sir. You did feel it break? Yes. It's uprooted. Yes. You're going God's way now. Shout it, I'm going God's way. I'm going God's way. No, I said shout it. I'm going God's way. I said a shout it. I'm going God's way. Come on, give him a shout. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Come on, somebody better give him a mighty praise. Yeah. Yeah. You got delivered, young man, tonight. Of three generations of stuff. Three generations left you tonight. Yes, you. Three generations Ooh, of uncleanness and the unclean devils are running away from you tonight. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Somebody's dealing with heart calcification around your heart. Your, your valves, the, the road to your heart, there's calcification. That's what the doctor told you. You're here tonight. You've got calcification around the heart. Who is this? Quickly. We're running, we're running thin on time at the moment, but I want you to come. Where, 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 where? Come on, ma'am. Can you, can, you, can you do a Holy Ghost two-step up here? Come on. Ushers, go get her. One of the ushers, go get her, please. Help her up here quickly. Yes. She's got a, I think she's a worker here. Looks like it. Are you a worker here? Wonderful. What's, what's this about the calcification? Um, they, whew. Oh, the power. Glory. Um, they said I'm in the upper 90 percentile. 90 percent. Isn't it amazing that out of all of these people, you are the woman that he called? Yes. You better remember that part of this. Not just the healing. But out of all these people, he called you. I'm grateful. I got it. <laughs> He's just going to clean your heart like battery cables. He's just going to get all the crud out of you. You're going to notice tomorrow morning when you get out of bed, you're jumping out of bed. Amen. Up and down the steps, up, it's going to be amazing. You're going to say, I don't want the elevator. I am gonna enjoy, I'm going to enjoy spending the energy. Because I'm going to serve him. i got a work to do. Do you work somewhere? For, do you work here for a job? Where do you work? Um, I, Jesus asked me. He came to me and he asked me. He was in his servant's okay. towel with a towel. Okay. And he asked me if I would join him, me and my husband, in the last great day harvest. Where at? In the last harvest. Okay, right now you mean? Yes. Okay, and do what? Just whatever. Evangelize. Evangelize. Incredible. There's so much of that to do. Yes. So many places to go. Oh, if you really want to serve him, there's, there's no, we're not short on places, I'll tell you that. 
I'm excited. So do you go to church here? Yes, sir. I'm a KCBC student first year. And my, and my I think there's Brad. a revival in this school <laughs> yes, taking place. Yes. That's what I think. Yes. <laughs> and my husband graduated last spring. Wow. So in this school, do you learn a lot? Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's awesome. And you get a lot of homework? Uh, it's not so bad. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Cleaning the valves. The calcification. Yes. This was a deadly, deadly thing. It's over. I'm grateful. When I talked about living in the stretch, there's someone here grew up. You grew up with a nickname, Stretch. That's what your nickname is. You're in the building tonight. You grew up with a nickname, Stretch. You're here. Where, just when, where are you? Another student. Oh my God. No. Tell me about your nickname. Stay here. Tell me about your nickname. They used to just call me Stretch in school. And I was, they made fun of me. <laughs> because they mocked you. They made yeah, fun. they made fun of me. They mocked me. And so they called you Stretch. stretch. But there was a reason. What did they mock you for? Do you Being know? skinny. That was really it. Wow. And here you are these many years later and God calls you out of the audience yes. with the name. <laughs> stretch. <laughs> I was a clown for a while. You were a clown? I was a clown for a while. It affected you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the word stretch, what I used earlier, is going to be more appropriate for what God's about to do with you. I'm fixing to go on a missions trip. Oh, my God. <laughs> Where are you going to go? I'm going to Guatemala next week. Next week. With who? With Living Water Teaching. Oh. I'm going to do medical missions. Medical? Give them a big God bless you. Come on. You're going to stretch everybody around you, sir. Mm, amen. Praise the God. The things that they're going to be uncomfortable doing, you're going to stretch yourself to do it. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what they're going to be. You're going to be known as the man that goes beyond what everybody else is not willing to do. You're going to break the fear spirit. You're going to break the mocking spirit. You. You're going to break the dead spirit. You're going to break the deaf and the dumb and the blind spirit. That power, the, oh my God. Somebody give God the shout. Come on, can you praise him? Can you praise him? I mean, he might have got hurt the way he fell. You ever seen anybody fall like that? There's, huh? He just. I think stretch got stretched. Come on, somebody. Amazing. Tomorrow morning we're here at ten o'clock. Okay, tomorrow morning. You, are we done with you? Are we done with you? No. I want it all. Oh. Just receive it, ma'am. You're in good shape. Yes, I am. Scrubbing those valves. Calcification gone. You're going to be in good shape. Give her a big God bless you. Come on. You okay, big guy? You all right? You okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, whenever you get the curse broke, then you can forgive your ancestors. Because you can get really mad that you're following in a path you know, that they created for you that's not right. And you realize I'm, under the, I'm, I'm caught up in the undertow. And it can make you not like somebody in your own family. But when, you get, when that gets cut, boy, then you can be so gracious and so merciful. It's important you get free. Come on, say it's important. It's important. That I get set free. That I get set free. It's just important. What do you need to be free of? Well, whatever he lets you know at the time you need free of. Doesn't happen all at once usually. It happens over time. But when he, when he prophetically calls it out or deals with it, that's when you go for it. Are we done with you? Yes, sir. Well, you want more? Yeah, I'm here for it. Come on, give God a big shout for this man right here. 
Come on, man. What is this? Um, back in the middle of March, okay. I tore both my rotary cups. That's terrible. That's I terrible. had surgery on the one. Okay. And he won't do surgery on the other one because it's not tore that much. Okay. But it's in a lot of pain. Okay. I go to... Uh, and it's just been painful since March. Oh, and I'm just so tired of the pain. Oh. I don't get to sleep very well because okay. I hurt so much. Okay. I go to therapy. Okay. And it and it. Where do you helps. go to church? Right here. Right here. Who's and your I'm pastor? A, pastor George and Derry. Okay. And I'm an alumni of Oh, KCF. no, no. <laughs> no. Why would I think that? Every other person's an alumni. Why would I think that? <laughs> I have just had enough of the pain. And I have talked to the Lord over in the family room. Lord, is it my time? Is it my turn to get rid of this? What did he say? And for all. What did he say? And pretty soon he goes, yes, it's your, it's your turn. Well, raise your hands and praise him. Just raise your hands. I said raise your hands. I said raise it. Just raise it. Raise it. Get it up. Raise it. Raise it. Raise it. Raise it. Raise it. Somebody give God a shout. Pow, the Holy Ghost. Put your hands up, sweetheart. Put them up in the air. Put your hands up. Put them up. Put your hands up. Put them up. Yeah. Take them back over your head. Back over your head. Just lay them on the floor. Just lay them on the floor. Just lay them on the floor. Oh, my. You shouldn't be able to do that. He's healing your rotator cup. I love the fact that she talked to God. God told her back, yes, that conversation. That all matters. That all matters. What are we done over here? The guy in the white shirt. What's going on over here? I'll get you in a minute, sir. What's going on? Yes, uh, the issue with the heart. Yeah. My, my wife told me that sometimes, you know, when I'm sleeping, I'm... Where's the wife at? Bring the wife up to me. Where's she at? Come on, ma'am. Hurry up, ma'am, in the green. Come on. Let's go. Is his heart stomping on you while you're sleeping? That's a scary thing, isn't it? So you told him to get up here. <laughs> so, so what, does it happen all the time? When I'm awake, yeah, I notice it. And you actually watch him stop breathing? Yep. And then he'll just jerk back. And... Mm-hmm. And don't let somebody tell you that's normal. Oh, that's normal. I, I don't think so. How many want to breathe all night? Come on, you want your heart to work all... How many want it to work all night? How many want to go to bed with your heart working and it beats all night long? That's the way it's supposed to. These people that tell you that things are normal is kind of like, what planet are they on? How long have you been a Christian? Uh, since, I think, a, a ch childhood, like four years old. You accepted yeah. Jesus? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. My wife and I were, were both from, uh, uh, originally from Ghana. From Ghana? Yes, uh -huh. but uh, we live in Canada, so. You live in Canada? Where yes. out in Canada? In Alberta. Alberta, yes. wonderful. So what brings you here? We just felt led. You felt to come to the meeting? To come to the meeting, yes. She wants to quit sleeping with a heart-stopping kind of a guy. I, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know. She just told me that when we were back. She just told you that. So I didn't even know that. Yeah. You didn't tell him all this time. Yeah, some things he doesn't always receive. You so. think what? Sometimes he doesn't, doesn't receive certain things very Sometimes well. Sometimes he don't receive too easily. <laughs> How many women understand what she's saying? Any? Oh, my word. Don't you raise your hand over there. Don't raise your hand. God help us. Sometimes help us so close and we don't get it, right? That stretch guy got called out of here. Stretch. I think that's incredible. Put your hands up. Your wife is probably going to be responsible for extending your life. You married the right woman. Yes. Yes. You married the right woman. You did the right thing. Well, the power's coming on both of you. The power's coming on both. Get, right, get behind her. Holy Ghost, we give you such praise for the wife and for the husband tonight. Come on, both of them. 
come on both. Come on both. I think I almost fell out on that one. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Woo. I'm coming over here. Holy ghost. It's strong over there. That woman you married, that girl, that girl will get you the whole way to heaven and back, I'll tell you right now. Come on, give God a big shout. Can you do that? Celebrate her. Celebrate her. She's a rare treasure. She's a rare treasure. And you're both going to do great things together. And your heart's being healed tonight. By the Holy Ghost, we give him all. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. We're almost done here, everybody, for tonight. Yes, come in quickly. Yes. What's going on here, young man? I stop breathing when I'm sleeping at night. You stop breathing too? Yeah. Does somebody tell you that or what? Yeah, somebody told me that. I, I, you know, I'm sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> so have you been diagnosed? Or yeah. With what? Uh, they said I stopped breathing at night. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Yeah. Well, serious, right? Yeah. Put your hands up. All right. You believe in Jesus? Yes. Are you Christian? Yes. You love the Lord? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. They can't wait to tell me. They must think I must know every student that's here. Like you have special privileges or something. I don't know. Oh, my. Oh, my, so wonderful. What year are you in? First. First year. You finding it easy to be here in this class, in the school? Um, yeah, it's, it's very, it's awesome. Do you have a favorite teacher? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me who it is? <laughs> right here? He moves you? Yeah. He motivates you? Yes. He's an example to you? Yeah. It's wonderful, isn't it? Those are rare people to have. Thank God you have those. Stick close, okay? Put your hands up high. Holy Ghost, touch him tonight. More than the heart, more than this breathing, touch his life. Touch his life and break the curse of where he came from. Break that curse as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, wow, wait. That guy just got, I'm, we're almost done. Is there a line forming over here? Oh, Lord Jesus, hurry up. Give me the guy. In, what's going on, buddy? Here. What's going on? I was diagnosed with severe sleep apnea. Severe. I stopped breathing 33 times an hour during my sleep study. You what? So I, I had 33 abnormal episodes per hour. Are you married? Yes, sir. Where's your wife at? She's back at the hotel. She's back at the hotel. So she told you, go get healed. I told myself, I'm coming to get healed. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Hurry, sir. Come on, sir. What's going on here? I've been sleeping with a CPAP machine for They're about, terrible, aren't they? About 15 years, yeah. That'll ruin your love life, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> somebody having a lot of nosebleeds. You've been having a lot of severe nosebleeds. Where are you? Quickly, come to me. Nosebleeds. Nosebleeds. I need you to hurry. I, it's late. Come on, nosebleeds, please. Those of you watching by television or by internet, make sure you call the number on the screen. Come on, get this blonde over here to me, quickly. Right here, money, honey, right over here, quickly, right over here. How long have you been having these? It's on and off, and it's very, very severe. It's very severe? <laughs> very severe. What have they told you is going to happen if you keep having? I didn't ask. They happen in your sleep? They happen in the daytime or in any time? Um, the morning, usually. Mm -hmm. Put your hands up. Hypertension is going to leave you tonight. But God's going to give you a shift. There's a great shift in your interest. In your interest in what you're pursuing. You're, there's a fork in the road. And God's going to, you think you're going this way and God's going to take you that way. Do you hear me? It's going to be amazing. Come on. Some, oh, somebody give him a shout. Yes, what's this? I've been sleeping with a CPAP for a Oh, no, you just said that. Oh, my God. We're about moving real quick here. Real quick. Real quick, give me the tall guy. Where's this guy that was right here? Where did he go? Right here. 
You've been so kind, sir. Thank you for being so patient. So kind you've been. So kind. What's your name? Elijah. Elijah. Well, I'm here. It is Elijah. I'm messing around with yeah. Elijah here. Yeah. What? What's going on, Elijah? I have a COPD. COPD. How long you had this? Oh, uh, 2009. Wow. 13, 14, 14 years. Yeah. Uh, a little longer than that. Uh, about that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a while. Too long. Who's making the noise over there? Oh, this girl. Who? Oh, the baby. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. I was there two years ago uh, when you was there. Uh-huh. And what happened? Well, uh, you prayed for me. Uh-huh. Two years ago. Yes. You doing better? No. I'm about the same. About the same. Yes. Put your hands up. Come on, say, I'm done with the same. I'm done with the same. I'm done with living in neutral. I'm done with living in neutral. It's time to get into gear. Let's get into gear. I got to do it. I got to do it. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Move up inside of me. Move up inside of and me. And touch my life. And touch my life. Give me new life. Give me new life. I promise to serve you. I promise to serve you. I'm breaking away from this crowd. I'm breaking away from this crowd. They're not good for me. They're not good for me. They're putting bad stuff in my head. They're putting bad stuff in my and head. And I'm done with it. And I'm done with it. By the Holy. Come on, somebody better give God a shout. Come on, somebody better give. Somebody better give God a shout. Somebody. Yes, ma'am. By the Holy Ghost that nosebleeds. Yes, nosebleeds. Breathing. Bring it, my oh. That's a delay. I've never seen that. <laughs> you you kind of get touched and you kind of go. And you, it's just different. <laughs> she needs to read the book on how to fall. Come on, say amen. What's going on here, ma'am? I'm here for a nosebleed. You're here for a You're too young for this. How old are you? I'm 12. 12? When did you start having nosebleeds? You're know. the mother? Yeah. Actually, I, growing up, I had a nosebleed. You had it, and then your and mother? And my kids, um, they all my have first it. one had it. Uh-huh. I don't know if my second, did you have it? Yeah. Anyway, so, I mean, it's, it's a thing that I grew up Let's with. Let's stand up. We're getting ready to close. Let's stand up our feet. Everybody all over the place. David, we're going to worship. Mm -hmm. So, so my kids have always, I mean, yeah. maybe like three years old, they will have it. and they will, He touched uh, me. Oh, he touched me. Oh, the joy that, that floods my soul. my soul. Come on, hands up. Something happened. Come on. Something, Something happened. And now I know he touch me and you stop breathing at night anymore. No, I want to stop. It's a good moment. She's a good moment. It's a good moment. Come on, something happened. Something.
And since I met my blessed Since I met this blessed Savior Since he cleansed And since he cleansed and made me I'm going over here in the front row Come on, I will never cease I will never cease To praise him Come on, my friend I'll shout it Come on, everybody, he touched me. He touched me. It's a power on you, man. It's a power on you. It's a power on you, sir. He's coming out of all these apparatuses. He's coming out of all of them. Out of all of them. Now I know. I was shackled by a hand. Shackled by a hand. The burden. Come on, I was neat. 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 The load of guilt. And shame. Come on, then the hand of Jesus. Then, oh. Come on, sir, hurry, sir. And I, oh, the power of the Holy Ghost. And I. Is this your husband? Who is this? He's my son. Oh, the Lord. Oh, the Lord. Dad. Something amazing has happened. Something amazing. Something amazing. Now I know. Come on. Now I know. Follow him. He touched me. Amazing, just amazing. Absolutely. Come on, right here. Are you here, sir? Come on. You, you need something, sir. Hurry. You with him? Are you with him? I'm sorry. You're his daughter? You better get up here if you're his daughter. That means you're with him. Sir, what's going on with you tonight? Do you, how'd you get here? Are you happy you're here? Yes, I am. Tell me about it. Uh, I go to church here. I okay. do. Uh, my wife's a KCBC student. She's in the second You're a year. student too? No, sir. No? No. I'm, uh, I've been called to uh, another Bible college, and I go plans to go this year in uh, August. What are you, you going to do in August? I'm going to Karis Bible College. I've been accepted. Karis Bible College. That's yes, Andrew. Yes, sir. Andrew Walmack. Grand yes, sir. School. Great. You're going to move there and do a correspondence? Uh, I'm going to move there. Well, I'm sorry? I'm going to move there. You're going to move to Denver. Or where's yes, that? Colorado Springs. Yes, sir. And your daughter going to go with you? Yes, sir. Are you ready for this trip? Yes. You excited about it? Yes. God's calling you. And your wife? Yes. God's calling all three of us. All three of you? Yes. I bet you can hardly wait to go. No, I can't wait. And you're going in a few months? Yes. <laughs> Put your hands up. Master, I ask you to touch them special tonight. Confirm every decision that they're making and make sure, Lord, every provision, every financial provision is there ahead of time. Not after he gets there and make him never have to beg for a dollar. Let favor fall. Let money be laid at his feet in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Somebody give God a shout. Come on, somebody. Somebody give him a mighty praise. Come on. Oh, something. Something. Uh, give me 
read the lyrics quickly. Now I know. Drop foot. I had surgery last. You had what now? Drop foot. Okay. Uh, last year. Right. I'm recovering. Most of it is, but it's not healed yet. I've got neuropathy, and I've got restless leg. You got what? Restless leg. Oh wow. And then I just found out. A couple days, I had. I have. A, have to have cataract surgery. Who are you, sir? Husband. Husband. Uh huh. I'm going to touch you. It's going to, it's going to go the whole way through your body. Okay. You're leaving without this walker. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm I just so said? Tired. Do you understand this? That yes. mighty power. Come on, somebody help that he woman. Touch me. My God. That's love. Help her up quickly. Help her up. Come on, something happened. Something. Come on, man. Let's go. Let's go. And I know <laughs> Let's walk, let's walk, let's walk. He touched me Just walk And made me Just walk, pick your legs up, march like a dog He touched me Leave her go, leave her go He touched me Pick your legs up, lady, pick your legs up And I Yes. Come on. Whoa. Uh, straight up. That's just straight. Look at you. Look at you. Look at your balance. Look at your balance. What do you think of this? It's wonderful. I've been I've been praying for this for. I've had it for a year. Where are you but from? It was, I'm from Amarillo, Texas. Amarillo. And uh, just march like it. Keep your legs moving, lady. Just keep the blood moving. Keep the oxygen movement. Faith is movement. Yes. That's what faith is. Faith yes. is movement, inside or outside, but it's movement. Amen. I've and I love to worship God, and I know God's called me, even though I've got the right hair. But I know He's got a calling for me. So, and I'm, I've got other things, other issues, blood pressure, all that. But I believe that was all taken care of when you did it, when you laid hands on me. Where's the husband at again? Where'd the husband go? Come on, sir, hurry up. You better catch up to this woman. What do you think of this? This is amazing. This is the answer. She has had prophecy that that she would be healed and there was nothing wrong with her at the time but it's happened and now the further the prophecy she yeah. is going to heal others yeah. by touching them Amen. By hands on them I saw myself I've been about a month ago I started seeing myself running and first walk and then run well, let's run let's run oh let's run okay you ready uh, how about if we walk fast Okay. Let's go okay. from let's go from walking to walking fast. Okay. Let's pretend there's a sale table back there with hats on it. And you're gonna be the first one to get to that <laughs> table. You ready? Here we go. Stay with her husband. Stay with her. No. Here we go. Quick. Don't jump over that lady right there. Be careful. Let her go quick, husband. Let her go. Husband, let her go. Go, lady, go. Go, lady, go. You better give her a big God bless you. Everybody's hands up all over the place tonight. What a great, what a great, great night. These are people waiting for prayer. Are these people here for prayer? He's what? I can't hear you. Come on down here, sir. I'm so glad you're here tonight. Where are you from? Irvin, you made an effort to be here, didn't you? Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what do we want to do here with both of you? Yeah. 
Bless you. Oh. That's right. Try to get your marriage to break up. Everything. Everything. Yeah. You love her enough to stay with her? Absolutely, yes. Tell her you're not going anywhere. Tell I'm not going anywhere. No, tell her you're not going anywhere. Yes, I'm not going anywhere. Don't tell me. We're not together. Tell this one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's mighty. It's mighty tonight. 2021, he got run over by a car, and it had to be airlifted, and God saved him. He's still, I mean, he didn't think there's anything wrong with okay. him, but there's a few All right, things man. wrong. I don't know what All right. Blonde, did you get the idea there of what God was saying to you? You got that? Come on, see, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make that shift. Okay. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Come on, everybody. Come close. Holy Spirit, touch the, touch the wife here. Just touch her. Oh, wow, the power's on this lady. My word, my word, my word. Come on, sir, put your hands up. All the way through your body. All the way through your body. All the way through the body. We give him such praise. Quickly, then we're going to close. Come on, every hand up in the air. Come on, every hand up. We're getting ready to close. Yes, ma'am. How'd that happen? I don't know. You're wearing, you're wearing a brace. How did that happen? I just feel the pain here because of... Because of my job, I think so. Is it hurting now? Yes. It is? Take it off a minute. Hurting now? I can't. I can't do like this. I can't. Especially in the night. Uh huh. She needs to sleep with the breast. And in the morning, she has to take the pills. Holy Ghost, we just thank you. We just praise you for this creative miracle. It's a creative miracle. No surgeries will be needed. No knife will cut, but God will heal. Somebody give him a mighty praise. Come on. Oh, wow. Quickly. Come on. Quickly. Yes, ma'am. Quickly. Cough and congestion and um, breast calcifications. Breast calcification. What would they say about that? Well, I had um, breast cancer, but I'm cancer free now. They did um, surgeries and radiation. Okay. and. No return of the curse. No return of the curse. No return. Come on, last one right here. Last one was here. This gentleman. Quickly, ma'am. Hurry, ma'am. Hurry. No, you. Right here. Hurry. I'm going to watch the step here. Go ahead. It was nosebleeds. What's that? Nosebleeds. Nosebleeds. But I'm standing in for my son. My son actually stood in for me this morning. A different son. My Touch her, Jesus. Touch her, Jesus. Wow. Oh, Lord. Come on. Hurry up, sir. This is it. This is it. What's going on, sir? Uh, apnea and also a booster prayer. You prayed for me a few years ago about... The heart, I've got a pacemaker, and since then I lost 100 pounds after you prayed for me. My heart rhythm wow. and the heart uh, is now pumping more efficiently. Before Then it was wow. 30%, now it's 45%. Somebody give God a shout! Come over here. He's already doing it, sir. And you did the right thing tonight by praising him. Yes. For what's happening into this heart cavity. You hear me? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Wonderful. His mighty Holy Spirit. Every hand up in the whole place tonight. Every hand up. Come on, say, Holy Spirit. You, what's that? You, what's going on here? You ran back, but you walked really fast. for me. Let me see how fast you walk quickly. Let me see. Pick those legs up. I need you to keep it. Pick the knees up. Pick the knees up. March like a soldier. Oh, my word. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. She'll be chasing you around the kitchen tonight, sir. Come on, every hand up. Say, Holy Spirit. There's nobody quite like you. Tonight, I feel the overflow. And I receive healing in my body. And my mind. Most of all, in my spirit. I want to get closer. I want to remove every obstacle. I want another hunger, one like I've never had, for the written Word of God. I want to get rooted and grounded so nothing coming can uproot me. No storm. Come on, say, nothing in the world's occurrences, nothing in the social culture 
can mess me up. I'm rooted. I'm grounded. And I'm a dangerous person. Come on, give God a big, big shout. 